Hi, Margot Shepherd. How are you? Thanks for coming. I'm going to do a little sharing and I'll be right with you. Hi, everybody. I'm now here. Oh, looks like it's me and Margo. Hi, Margo. How are you? 
Since we lost our house to the lava, we have been building another one. It's nearly done, and we can, I can, I can nearly move in. I'm all packed. Well, good luck, Margo. Um, are you anywhere near the lava this time? I hope you're far away from where it could possibly come. And K.E. Clark Ryan has joined. My daughter, Devorah, has joined. Hey, Devorah, how are you? And uh, K says, hey, Joe. Hey, K. <laughs> okay. So tonight, I wanted to talk about the just... Uh, that's very good. Far, far from the lava, says <laughs> Marco. Okay, tonight I want to talk about the just uh, a transition to a green uh, New Deal. Or the famous just uh, the transition. Okay, exactly what is that like? Well, to provide some ideas, first I wanted to talk about something that it is not like. And then I wanted to talk about some ideas from Europe about what it should be like. And then I wanted to contrast um, 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 about all this with some ideas uh, from Bernie Sanders about what it uh, should be like. So here we go. I'm going to start by sharing a page with you. And here we are. It's an article from Common Dreams. It was written by, um, um, uh, by, uh, by Andrea Germanus. Published on Monday, December 2nd, Common Dreams. The headline is Green Groups at COP25 Warn Against uh, Market Driven Solutions to uh, the Climate uh, uh, Emergency. And there's a very nice picture of uh, some youth activists protesting uh, the carbon markets uh, um, at one of the United Nations uh, um, conferences, uh, the UNFCCC negotiations in Bonn in 2012. So protests against uh, um, the carbon markets have been going on since then. I'll get rid of the extraneous matter on this page. Now, we'll pass the picture and get to the article. As the UN Climate Summit, COP25, kicked off uh, in Madrid, Spain on Monday, environmental advocacy groups warned that uh, market-driven solutions to tackling the global emergency are an obstacle to real solutions to rein in um, emissions and making those most responsible for the crisis pay. At issue are international carbon markets, which as a DW headline put it, will, quote, take center stage, unquote. And quote, the, uh, the big polluters must be rubbing their hands in glee the carbon market mechanisms, which further dilute the already weak and inadequate um, Paris emissions targets, are back on the agenda, unquote. Said uh, Dipti Batnagar, now there's a name to conjure with, climate justice and energy program coordinator for Friends of the Earth, 
of International, um, FOEI, in a statement. As Nature explained on Monday at last year's conference, uh, that nations agreed on a set of rules for tracking and reporting greenhouse gas emissions and for reviewing collective progress. However, they failed to establish clear rules around carbon markets through which emissions made in one country can be offset by investing in low carbon technologies um, um, elsewhere. Although it is unclear uh, whether negotiators will be able to reach agreement this time around, Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, which aims to promote um, voluntary international cooperation between nations, is a central point on the agenda, and offsetting will almost certainly be discussed. And offsetting is the practice of uh, uh, the people dealing in carbon markets, basically, and uh, trying to offset um, emissions made in one country by investing in low carbon technologies elsewhere. Climate groups have treated carbon markets with suspicion, whether they take the form of cap and trade, quote unquote, where one polluter can trade its surplus units of allowable carbon emissions to another, or carbon offsetting, in which some activity is done to offset uh, the carbon created by a polluter. Excuse me. <coughs> Just a small sneeze. I don't have a cold. So it's probably just some some dust. In a briefing paper last month, Friends of the Earth and other climate groups said that not only do carbon markets not work to adequately limit emissions, the market approaches can unleash harmful consequences for local and indigenous uh, communities. And quote, carbon markets operate on the false and unscientific assumption that offsetting emissions and selling permits to pollute will reduce global warming, unquote, the group said. Of course, there's no empirical evidence to suggest this. There's no uh, uh, there's no proof to suggest it. Uh, there's only market-based um, um, theory to suggest it. And given okay, the dimensions of the climate crisis right now, it's a little too late to just follow theories which sub subject us to risk. Risk has to be managed. Risk has to be uh, 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 implemented, so we need programs that almost certainly, by their very nature, are going to limit the CO2 we put into the air and therefore are going to reduce uh, by global warming. And the briefing paper details a number of problems with the scheme, including that carbon prices are too low. The markets do nothing to remedy, uh, to remedy the local impacts of fossil fuel projects. Quote, offsetting, unquote, projects can lead to evictions of forest uh, dwellers. And trading can allow fossil fuel companies whose voices are uplifted over those of communities a decade or more of time to continue their planet warming projects, which of course right now is a decade that we cannot afford. And we'll see why, well, we saw why actually uh, last week when I discussed at some length uh, how close we are to many tipping points we're close to tipping points and feedback loops that can create a hothouse earth. And we don't want to take any chances that we're going to reach uh, that point, that kind of situation. Now, the Global Justice Ecology Project and Biofuel Watch also addressed carbon markets in a statement on Monday saying the approach was being pushed by Chile in this year's climate 
uh, conference. Of course, whatever is being pushed by Chile may well be changing because the government of Chile looks like it's increasingly unstable now and more and more likely to be replaced by a more progressive government. And so Chile's whole position on what measures to take to stem the emergency uh, may be changing within the year. Anyway, the group condemned the scheme as, quote, commodification of the earth, unquote, that um, um, enables, quote, climate destroying business as usual under the pretense of climate um, action, unquote. Quote, the climate crisis is already devastating lives, said um, um, FOEI's Batnagar in her statement. Quote, emissions are still rising. Now is not the time to offer an escape route to polluting northern country governments and, uh, and uh, the big oil. I read that incorrectly. Now is not the time to offer an escape route to polluting uh, northern country governments uh, um, and to big oil, unquote. Quote, again, carbon markets fail to deliver emissions reductions or adequate climate action and impact horrifically on indigenous peoples and local communities, unquote. Uh, quote again, okay, from, uh, from Batnagar this time, quote, they only serve to strengthen corporate power and impunity deflect responsibility from rich uh, um, um, historical polluters and prevent urgent and equitable action on climate change. Speaking to reporters, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by, to reporters in Madrid on Sunday, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres laid out what's at stake at the climate crisis in stark terms. Quote, we are confronted now with a global climate crisis. The point of no return is no longer over the horizon. It is in sight and hurtling towards us. Unquote. That threat drew young people to the streets on Friday for another global climate strike uh, ahead of COP25. Youth climate uh, leaders, youth climate leaders, Greta uh, Thunberg, Sweden, and uh, Luisa Neubauer of Germany, okay, and Angelo Valenzuela of Chile, wrote Friday in an op ed for Project Syndicate that, quote, striking is not a choice we relish. We do it because we see no other uh, options, unquote. We have watched, quote, we have watched a string of UN climate conferences unfold. Um, 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 countless negotiations have produced much hyped, but ultimately empty commitments from the world's governments. The same governments that allow fossil fuel companies to drill for um, ever more oil and gas and burn away our futures for their profit, unquote. Uh, the message of the youth to those at COP25, quote, is simple. The eyes of all future generations uh, are upon you. Uh, act accordingly, um, unquote. So, and the lesson there is that carbon markets do not provide a just uh, transition. So let's get to some considerations for what might produce such a transition. There's an article that appeared in Reimagine called um, uh, 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 Reimagining a Just uh, Transition. 
And that appeared in Social Europe. And it was written by, uh, by Eloy Laurent. I think that's a French name. So Laurent it is. And he is opening a Social Europe series on the just transition by framing it in the context of the social um, um, ecological state. I'll put this into clearly at this point. Oh, this was uh, uh, written on December 2nd, 2019. I'll put this into clearly now. If I can get it into clearly, here it is, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, transitions have a bad name. Uh, Rob Hopkins. Who... Um, 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 introduced the word transition into, into the environmental lexicon is said to have chosen the most neutral expression possible so that reluctant consumers and businesses would not be frightened by the hard choices and sacrifices entailed by living in harmony with uh, the biosphere as opposed to blindly destroying it. Transitions are supposed to be painless. What is worse, the French historian Jean-Baptiste um, Afresol has convincingly argued that, quote, energy transition, unquote, is an expression coined by industrial lobbies in the mid-1970s to prevent the idea of energy crisis from taking hold in Western minds. Transitions are supposed to never really happen and remain forever ideas for tomorrow. And yet the concept of transition is actually a very powerful tool to think about what we should be doing in the face of worsening um, um, ecological crisis and to act upon it. Imagine a transition means having to answer three fundamental questions. Why is the world we live in not uh, desirable um, anymore? What world do we want and how do we get from here to there or as the article says how to get from here to there it goes on if you think the notion of quote transition unquote is a bit tricky wait until you grapple with the idea of a quote just transition unquote uh, this was an idea promoted in the early 1990s by the U.S. labor leader, Tony Masacci, to resolve, quote, the conflict between jobs and the environment, um, unquote. It has resonated in recent climate uh, summits where heads of state have endorsed the need for, a quote, just transition of the workforce, unquote, in fossil fuel uh, industries. Understood from the standpoint of the political cycle, however, there's a clear warning here to all governments not to engage in ecological transition, lest they be overthrown by the social revolt of laid off, quote, uh, transitioned workers and angry taxpayers. Just ask the French president, uh, Emmanuel Macron. And yet, the just transition might indeed be the most interesting idea of the early 21st century. I think we're finding it so here in the United States as the twin crises of inequality and the biosphere uh, feed one another, provided we embrace its full meaning. It is much more demanding, unfortunately, than a helping hand to make a new start in life of fossil fuel workers and their families, as um, um, uh, Tony Misachi put it. The economist Jim Boyce estimates that the cost of guaranteeing reemployment for workers, uh, meeting pension commitments, and assisting communities 
for the whole U.S. fossil fuel industry, one of the largest in the world, amounts to less than 1% of the investment needed in the country for low carbon uh, energy. So the big question, what would be the key components of a just uh, um, transition? And there's a video in this article okay, at this point, which I am not going to play, but uh, I think that video addresses the question to some degree. But going on with the article, first question, first answer. What is the unjust world we don't want anymore? It is one where um, um, inequality and unsustainability go hand in hand. When we're outsourcing of environmental damage of all kinds is um, enabled by the gap between the rich and poor among and within countries and where the poor become ill and die because of the damages inflicted on their well-being by the degradation of their environment. Environmental um, 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 inequality, access to clean air, drinkable water, energy, uh, 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 food, um, uh, also protection from climate change, and so on, is an inescapable challenge of our time. Inequality literally pollutes our planet. This is true at the global level, with 90% of deaths related to air pollution occurring in low- and middle-income countries. It is also true of Paris, city of light, love, and lung um, irritation. Recently released maps so clearly show clearly that hundreds of thousands of um, uh, uh, hundreds of thousands hundreds of thousands of uh, Parisians in low-income and middle-class neighborhoods and along the uh, the, uh, the peripheric <laughs> ring road are exposed to poisoning pollution while the affluent Paris of the south and west is largely exempt from this lasting degradation of well-being. Inequality is a pollution enabler. The pollution is an inequality accelerator. I think that's a nice meme. Inequality is a pollution enabler. Um, the pollution is an inequality accelerator. Somebody should make that meme. Second question, second answer. What is the just world we desire and should be aiming for? One where human well-being here and now, tomorrow and elsewhere is improved. Not uh, growth. Yes, the growth compass is still an attractive deception to many, but that is because they confuse it with social process, with social progress. And a fundamental reality is materializing before our eyes. It is not growth that creates wealth but wealth that creates growth. Growth is the superficial measure and the result of um, human development. If growth is being pursued at the expense of well-being, and is, as is so obviously the case in the United States, where health institutions and infrastructures are crumbling, while um, gross domestic product driven by inequality increases by 3% um, annually, then growth is an impoverishment. Look at Chile, where GDP per capita has increased by 80% over the last 15 years, where growth was 4% last year and 3% uh, but, uh, but, uh, but this year, and yet justice distribution uh, rather than production is the core demand of the protesting public. Look at California, where GDP grows at the breathtaking rate of 5% a year, almost as fast as in China, and whose ecospheres have entered a systemic crisis so severe that parts of 
uh, this magnificent region are quickly becoming uninhabitable. uninhabitable. Isn't it obvious that the health of children is a far better indicator of development than GDP growth. Why not do what New Zealand did last May and put it front and center in our public uh, uh, um, finances? And why not? In Australia, some of the MMTers, Phil Lawn, Uh, and uh, but Stephen Hale. Okay, um, and especially Phil uh, working on the genuine progress um, indicator. And other nations as well. People are measuring well-being. This increasingly is going on in the Scandinavian nations um, um, as well. When will we catch up to the times in the United States? I wonder. And here we get to just policies. Finally, how to build just policies between the unwanted world uh, and the desirable one. By considering inequality as an obstacle and justice as a lever. Consider climate change. One of the most shocking climate change numbers, and there are plenty, is not the 3.2 Celsius global temperature rise by the end of the century, business as usual entails. It is the fact, rarely discussed, that even if all countries achieve their targets and pledges, we are still heading for a plus 2.9 degree Celsius world. In other words, the problem is not achieving targets, it's changing them. And this requires starting, at long last, the global conversation about climate justice, which is a notion only mentioned once and misinterpreted in the Paris Agreement. So notice, we as a nation have withdrawn from the Paris Agreement and are doing nothing to even meet the targets of the Paris Agreement. But the rest of the world is talking about going past of the Paris Agreement to new targets that may actually work. So, a handful of countries, 10% um, exactly, and a handful of people and in industries within these countries are responsible for 80% of human greenhouse gas emissions causing the climate change which is increasingly destroying the well-being of much of uh, humanity around the world, mostly in developing nations. On the other hand, the vast majority of those affected in Africa and Asia in their billions live in countries which carry almost nothing in terms of responsibility, but are highly vulnerable to the disastrous consequences of climate change, heat waves, hurricanes, flooding, and so on, triggered by the lifestyles of others. Why is climate change? still not uh, being mitigated and indeed worsening before our eyes, largely because the most responsible are not the most vulnerable and vice versa. Climate justice is the key to understanding and eventually solving the urgent climate crisis. It is the solution to climate change. As much as the great uh, 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 Greta deserves praise for standing tall in the face of stupidity and hatred. She is wrong on one important point. People will not, quote, unite behind science, unquote. They will unite behind uh, justice. Let's start the conversation on climate justice at COP25 and make it the substance of a 2020 climate justice treaty, which would be efficient because it is fair. This is as true at the national as the global level. As much as opponents and skeptics of low carbon, um, of low carbon initiatives wanted to be so, the quote, yellow vests, unquote, uh, revolt, one year old this month, did not demonstrate that environmental policies must be unfair by nature. They can be unfair by design 
it is perfectly possible tomorrow to introduce in France, for instance, a progressive carbon tax, which would redistribute money to most households and help drastically to reduce fuel poverty. This is the typical social uh, um, ecological policy, part of a broader social uh, ecological state built on the justice of uh, the sustainability nexus, which will take us to the future we still uh, want. None of these three steps of the just transition is easy to take in and of itself. But if taken together simultaneously, will reinforce one another. Aiming to reduce environmental destruction rather than increase growth is reinforced by combating inequality here and now and by taking inequality into account when designing environmental policy. Difficult? For sure. But try living in a world that burns like California and breaks down like uh, Chile. I hope you liked that article. I certainly did. I think there are a few conceptual problems in it, but I don't think we have to nitpick um, just now. I think you know what the main thesis is, that it's the just transition that is the key to solving uh, climate change. And the key to the just um, the transition is combating um, inequality in the here and now. So, now the second article in the series. Why should just transition be an integral part of the European Green uh, um, Deal? They refer to it as the Green Deal over there often. Uh, it's also appeared in Social Europe, and it's by Bella Galgachi, I think his name is pronounced. Or maybe it's Galgosi. I'm sure my grandmother knew how to pronounce that because she spoke Hungarian as one of her languages, but unfortunately I do not. Anyway, Bella Galgochi focuses on what it means for the key sectors of, coals, of coal and cars. That there is a climate emergency has been widely acknowledged. Put this on clearly again. New scientific evidence on the devastating effects of climate change, ever more dramatic, appears on a weekly basis. Scientists warn that global warming may reach a tipping point in the immediate future, one that triggers a sudden and violent shift in the system and catalyzes a domino effect of, of dramatic further changes uh, via positive uh, feedback mechanisms, the feedback loops they're often called. While the COP21 Paris Agreement of 2015 was a historical milestone, the commitments of the signatories would only confine global warming to an estimated 3 degrees Celsius by the end of the century compared with the pre-industrial levels. This would far overshoot the plus uh, 1.5 degree Celsius ceiling which according to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, is necessary to keep the impacts within bounds. A long-term objective, acknowledging the gap between the European Union's earlier commitment and the Paris targets in November 2018, uh, the European Commission, the EC, set the long-term objective of a climate-neutral Europe to be achieved by 2050. Far too late, far too late. The European Green Deal, announced by the new commission as its flagship initiative, is to transform this objective into concrete policies. 
One pillar is a large-scale investment plan, which would require estimated uh, by yearly commitments of between 175 and 290 billion euro, or about um, at most uh, at uh, um, by today's rates. Uh, maybe four hundred billion dollars or four trillion dollars over ten years doesn't come anywhere near Bernie Sanders' estimate of sixteen point two trillion dollars for the United States, and the Europeans will need a comparable investment. So this suggestion of between one seventy five and two hundred ninety billion euro is still small ball, more akin to Elizabeth Warren's climate plan than it is to Bernie Sanders' uh, climate plan. Stepping up the EU's climate ambition is unquestionably the priority, but we need to be aware of what it means to reduce greenhouse gases in the next 30 years at four times the rate the EU will have achieved between 1990 and 2020. This would constitute a fundamental revision of the linear, extractive, and fossil fuel-based growth model of the past with the restructuring of the entire economy, leading to major changes and adjustments which would affect jobs, livelihoods, working conditions, skills, and employment prospects. This paradigm change can only succeed if it happens in a socially balanced way, quote, just transition a framework developed by the trade union movement to encompass a range of social interventions needed to secure workers' rights and livelihoods when economies are shifting to sustainable production has become a recognized element of climate policies uh, referred to in the Paris Agreement. To editorialize on this, wouldn't it have been wonderful, wouldn't it have been wonderful if the first time we realized that we had a climate change problem and that it was a serious problem. Going back to the Carter administration, certainly, where it was getting executive level attention at that time, wouldn't it have been wonderful? if the people within the Carter administration had also realized that to solve the problem, they had to design a just transition to get off of fossil fuels. Obviously, but Jimmy Carter was in the forefront and his policymakers were in the forefront of thinking of alternatives to fossil fuels and lowering our dependence on fossil fuels. They were very serious about that. But at that time, what worked against the movement and its success and what continued to do so until at least the 1990s and probably later is that it was always viewed, there was always viewed a trade-off between a just transition and a quick and successful transition to handling the climate um, change problem. And that was not just a false choice, but it turns out that all these years we have gone nowhere with the climate change problem because we could never get everybody to agree on what the transition was going to look like because the people who gave uh, the climate the um, high priority would not give um, equal priority to those people who had to live through this and be treated in a fair way. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the just um, transition idea had gained um, currency during the 1970s? It would have saved us 
40 years of fooling around with the situation getting worse and worse and worse under our feet, um, as it were. Getting back to the article. Early declarations about the European Green Deal suggest that a social dimension would be one of its integral um, elements. The cases of two key sectors of the European economy, energy and the automotive industry, demonstrate why this is important. Phasing out coal, meeting the Commission's objective of a net zero carbon economy by 2050, will not be possible without the timely phasing out of unabated coal from uh, energy generation. In 2018, 18% of the EU's greenhouse gas emissions came from the chimneys of just 284 coal power plants, with a total employment of 52,700 people across the Union. 2017, uh, the number of coal mining jobs uh, in the EU was uh, just below 130,000. And then there's a podcast here as well, which I'm not going to play. I leave it to you to go to since you have a link to the article. Although the total number of coal dependent jobs makes up only a small fraction, about 0.15% of European employment, and a much greater percentage of jobs were lost during the financial crisis. The challenge is that these are concentrated in a small number of regions with wide ranging potential impacts on the local and regional economy. Poland alone has nearly two-thirds of the coal mining and nearly half of total coal-dependent jobs in Europe. In many of these regions, the livelihood of a large part of the population is dependent on a coal-based economy. Although a lot of progress has been made, the current phase-out plans by member states are uh, inadequate by far. See the map and substantial efforts remain to be made. Well, I'm not going to be able to avoid this one, so I am going to show you the map, which is uh, certainly illuminating. And you can see the light gray uh, uh, are the coal-free areas, and the dark gray are the area is planning a coal exit. Uh, and the black areas are areas of no coal phase out, and then the areas of no data, okay, or insufficient data. Okay, and what we're talking about here is the EU, so it does not go into uh, to Russia. Okay. Okay, you see in the Scandinavian countries, uh, see a phase out of 2022. In 2029, widely differing dates is Ireland 2025 and the UK 2025. Uh, Denmark, uh, we're talking 2030. There's Poland and the Czech Republic and also Slovakia over there. Uh, no phase-outs are yet planned here. And no phase-outs uh, in one of the Baltic countries. And there's Germany's in gray, France in gray. So you see, uh, there are um, the very few countries where this is going to happen real, real soon. 
France, okay, is one of those. In 2022, one of the earliest okay, phase outs. Uh, um, Austria has an early phase out of 2020, but Hungary it doesn't happen until 2030. Um, but Turkey is planning on phasing out in 2028. So you see the widely varying dates. Nothing soon enough. What we're planning to do here, of course, okay, in the Green New Deal, is to largely get off okay, of fossil fuels sometime between 2030 and 2040 and to be carbon neutral by 2030. Okay, so, we're planning a catch-up that will be very substantial compared to a good part okay, of Europe. So going on with the article, shifting back to that was the status of coal phase out in the EU in October 2019. Phasing out coal is thus a manageable and highly rewarding ambition. Indeed, it is seen as low-hanging fruit, quote-unquote, but dedicated and concentrated efforts are needed in terms of regional and employment initiatives in which an EU-level just transition fund must play a leading role. It's a transport shift. Unlike coal, cars and individual transport will have a future in a net zero-carbon world but it will be a very different one from today, with a shift in modes of transport and a phase-out of the internal combustion engine. Although the automotive industry is not widely seen as a case for just transition policies, the magnitude of employment change in this sector will definitely require that. Unlike coal, the industry is a key employer in Europe, covering 13.8 million jobs altogether. It is undergoing three simultaneous transformations. First, uh, uh, a regulation aimed at fulfilling climate objectives and improving environmental performance is pushing it towards powertrain electrification. Secondly, there is a mobility revolution where extensive uh, uh, digitization and vehicle electrification will boost uh, oh, the development of new business concepts and service provision functions based on new connectivity and autonomous features. Such change is truly revolutionary since it has the potential for overhauling vehicle usage and ownership along with the industry's traditional business model. Um, thirdly, digitization across the automotive value chain promises the trust the physical limits of flexible production further with considerable impact on working environments. Uh, intelligent um, systems for production are building the interface between production machines and employees through an integrated communication network in addition to the new uh, automation potential opening up. This will also, also facilitate comprehensive control of the production process. The paradigm change in mobility and transport will also have a disruptive, uh, have a disruptive effect on established patterns of um, the globalization in the industry. Car manufacturers in Europe will need to face these challenges, which will rewrite Sorry, I lost my place in here. Which will rewrite business models with reverberations throughout the supply chain. And then the final section on the social dimension. An ambitious um, the European Green Deal can only succeed if it has a strong social dimension. As the European Trade Union Confederation, the ETUC, puts it, 
This must be, quote, inclusive and supportive for the most vulnerable region sectors and workers, unquote. The transport and energy sectors uh, will deliver a large part of the decarbonization of the European economy and deserve special attention in terms of investment and social and employment policies. Phasing out coal as soon as possible is the preeminent interest of the entire EU and will have a huge reward in terms of uh, reducing um, emissions combined with very limited employment effects at the European level. At the same time, coal-based employment is concentrated in a small number of European uh, regions. There is a clear case for European solidarity and the delimited scale of the problem allows of rapid progress. Um, the European structural and cohesion policies need to prioritize Green Deal objectives, but um, the dedicated support is also required. The existing European platform for coal regions in transition needs to be equipped with appropriate finances and could be rebranded re as the Just Coal Transition Platform, the JCTP. I like it. The automobile industry faces even more complex challenges, and its importance for the European economy is of a different um, is of a different uh, um, magnitude. Its transitions will need tailored employment policies under a new framework. Social dialogue and plant level agreements will have a key role in managing okay, an epochal transformation process. With higher climate ambition, it must be clear that earlier ideas about a just transition fund should also be upgraded. Pooling existing funds and attaching a just transition label won't uh, do. Uh, it must also be clear that earlier um, ideas about how much a just transition is going to cost also need to be uh, upgraded and extended. The EU okay, has a population that's uh, roughly equivalent to the United States okay, at this point. And uh, if we require a plan of $16 trillion here, they're going to need a plan of similar scale there. As I said before, I think the $16 trillion is going to be inadequate here. I will say we do have more work to do here because they already have infrastructure there that's better for the climate emergency than we have, and they've been making quicker progress in the uh, in the alternative energy area as well. So we have more to do here, but still, uh, the equivalent of $4 trillion over 10 years seems to me to be too little for Europe. I think Europe's going to have to make changes into its public uh, financing system and because uh, the monetary system uh, currently with the Troika, uh, the IMF, uh, uh, the, uh, the European Central Bank, okay, and the EC uh, does not provide a sufficient amount of public financing for the changes we are going to have to see. It all can't be done on deficits that are held in all the nations to 3%. Um, 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 per year, a just uh, the transition assumes that um, um, those areas that have to be um, upgraded uh, faster will be should be able to spend uh, have a greater amount of deficit spending, okay, than other areas that are much farther along. In particular, this has to be applied to Greece. Okay, it has to be applied uh, to uh, to other nations uh, um, 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 in the EU. Uh, the nations that have suffered the most uh, from the crash of two thousand eight, nine, okay, and ten. 
uh, there's going to have to be a lot more money invested than what people are talking about in these two articles. So with that as a note, and noting the kind of thinking that goes into a just um, a transition, uh, let us review again something we have done before, which is uh, Bernie Sanders' current version of the Green um, 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 New Deal. Okay, now notice that the Green New Deal here is a plan that is in continued uh, development um, um, and evolution. It's not in the form, okay, of legislation yet. It's going to include a number of bills, okay, as the original New Deal did. They're going to happen over a period of time. Our ideas on what's necessary okay, are going to change. But this is the current state, okay, of our um, on ideas for Green New Deal or Bernie's ideas anyway, okay, and his group. Uh, and uh, it's very interesting to look at it and to see uh, whether it's up to date in comparison to the kinds of thoughts, okay, which the Europeans are having, okay, whether it's even more advanced. But of course, we've been through these key points already. Uh, transform our energy system to 100% uh, renewable energy and create 20 million jobs needed to solve the, uh, the climate crisis. I think it's going to be more than 20 million jobs, but okay, 20 million jobs is certainly a good start especially since we're supposed to be so close to full employment okay at this point i don't credit that at all i think probably 20 million new jobs are needed to create a much tighter full employment um, situation which will bring much more climate justice to people for the transition Ensure a just transition for communities and workers, including fossil fuel workers. Ensure justice for frontline communities, especially under-resourced groups, communities of color, um, the Native Americans, people with disabilities, children and the elderly. Save American families money with investments in uh, uh, weatherization, public transformation, uh, uh, the, uh, the modernization of infrastructure, and high-speed uh, broadband. And boy, do we need upgrading of our public transportation system and our infrastructure. Everything's crumbling around here and has been for a very long period of time. And everybody needs broadband, um, high-speed broadband. Everybody needs it. I haven't, okay, at this point, but... Uh, I happen to be in a fortunate area, but of course, it's very high priced, okay, in this area. And I fully expect that when um, the broadband is provided by the government, um, high speed broadband, that the cost to households of having high speed broadband is going to uh, decrease by at least 50%, and maybe more than that. Commit to reducing emissions throughout the, the world, including providing $200 billion to the Green Climate Fund, rejoining the Paris Agreement, which by then will probably be, be a new Paris Agreement, and reasserting uh, the U.S.'s leadership in the global fight against uh, um, climate change. That may take more than $200 billion a year, but it should be mentioned $200 billion a year is $2 trillion dollars which uh, $2 trillion that we would be giving to other nations versus the $4 trillion which the EU has been talking about for itself uh, alone. That $2 trillion 
then becomes okay, an impressive figure. But uh, we may have to kick in more to compensate for the harm that we've done to many of the developing nations and continue to do okay, by providing markets for the kinds of changes that are going on in some of the developing nations, which include uh, large-scale uses of uh, fossil fuels. <laughs> and various other releases okay, of emissions into the atmosphere. Invest in conservation and public lands to heal our soils, forests, heal our soils, forests, prairie lands, and the greed of the fossil fuel industry and hold them accountable. And then okay, here are details which I'm not going to go through, but uh, notice the emphasis on uh, the poor companies that are on uh, communities that are on the front line of climate change, communities of color, uh, um, taking seriously the warnings by the UN, uh, by the IPCC that we have less than 11 years to transform our energy system away from fossil fuels to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. Uh, Bernie talks about, of course, guaranteed health care, housing, and good paying jobs. Okay, um, the living wage jobs uh, to, to every person who wants one, who needs one, especially to those who have been historically excluded from economic uh, prosperity. Uh, placing the scope of the challenge on the same level okay, as World War II for the United States, uh, that is a big change in conception. It is a big move. Uh, if Bernie Sanders were elected and made a commitment um, um, to that, okay, that kind, most probably the European nations would follow and even strengthen uh, and increase the degree of their commitment to solving the climate change problem. And of course, uh, that part of, of the plan, we need a president who has the courage, the vision, and the record to face down the greed of fossil fuel executives and the billionaire class who stand in the way of climate action. We need a president who welcomes their hatred. Bernie will lead our country to enact the Green New Deal and bring the world up together to defeat the existential threat of climate change. So hitting the highlights very quickly now, Bernie Sanders is going to avert climate catastrophe and create uh, 20 million jobs. And promising complete decarbonization of the economy by 2050, okay, the latest. Okay, those, that's a similar target, okay, to Europe's for decarbonization. And I think it's got to happen before then. If it doesn't happen okay, before then, I think we're going to see these feedback effects that we won't be able to do anything about. We'll have to face a future that will be much, much hotter. And that would be a tragedy for all of us. Okay, the promise to end uh, 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 unemployment is a just transition sort okay, of promise. Directly invest in historic 16.3 trillion public investment toward these efforts in line with the mobilization of resources made during the New Deal and World War II. 
it was an explicit choice to include uh, uh, black, indigenous, and other minority communities who were systematically excluded in the past and adjust the transition for workers, declaring climate change a national uh, emergency, uh, which Bernie has already done in his campaign, of course, and will certainly do if he gets into the White House. Saving families money okay, by weatherizing homes, supporting small family farms by investing in ecological, uh, ecologically regenerative and sustainable uh, on, on, on agriculture for pulling carbon out of the air. Very, very important part of getting rid of the climate emergency we have now. <laughs> Justice for frontline communities, um, committing to reducing emissions throughout the world, meeting and exceeding our fair share of global emissions reductions, setting targets. We will reduce domestic emissions by at least 71% by 2030 and reduce emissions among the less industrialized nations. In other words, we'll work with other less industrialized nations uh, to reduce their emissions by 36 percent by 2030 the total equivalent of reducing our domestic emissions by 161 percent making massive investments okay, in r d I don't know about making our plastic more sustainable through advanced uh, chemistry. We may be able to do that, but we may just have to junk plastics, I'm afraid. Expanding the climate justice movement will do this by coming together in a truly inclusive movement that prioritizes young people, workers, indigenous peoples, communities of color, and other uh, um, 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 historically marginalized groups to take on the fossil fuel industry and other polluters to push this over the finish line and lead the globe in solving the climate crisis. Investing in conservation, okay, in uh, public lands to heal our soils, forests, okay, and prairie lands. Pointing out the plan will pay for itself over 15 years. Experts have scored the plan, its economic effects. So you can pay through the plan, but you can see that it is every bit as ambitious as what uh, the authors from Europe uh, uh, that I read from earlier uh, are talking about. The Green New Deal plan, Bernie Sanders. Um, currently promises to go as far or further uh, than what um, some of um, our European counterparts are setting for themselves uh, um, right now. But the only candidate who is talking this kind of language, setting forth ideas that compare to what the Europeans are thinking about and talking about for a just transition to a Green New Deal uh, is Bernie Sanders. We must be honest about that. We must be careful about that. We must be definite about that. Nobody else is talking in terms that are as comprehensive as this among the, uh, the major parties. I'm sure the Green Party uh, has plans uh, that rival Bernie's in comprehensiveness. 
I don't know what the latest plans are that they, they are putting out, but I'm sure they are very, very good and are up there with some of the best plans, okay, as well. But when it comes to major party candidates, uh, I think the best plan is the Bernie Sanders plan. And it's certainly comparable to the kinds of transformations which uh, the, uh, the Europeans okay, are talking about. Okay, there's attention given to, uh, to methane here. Okay, and doing something about that. More details on transportation. And so on. Okay, I will allow you to go through the rest of it. Okay, once again, since not too many weeks ago, I meant, went into the whole thing, okay, in detail. Okay, but you can see it squares with what uh, the, uh, the Europeans, okay, are thinking about. Okay, so there it is. I will leave you to it. I've left the link. Okay, now I'll consider your comments and questions. First, I'll remind you to please share, like, and subscribe. And please become a patron at www.patreon.com front slash Joe underscore Firestone. I very much appreciate any help that you can give me. And thank you to my patrons. You're really doing a great thing. Okay, I so much appreciate it. So, let me go back to your comments. Let me go to your comments and consider them. <laughs> Alana says good evening, good evening. Susan Eldridge has joined. Jeffrey Genter has joined. Hey, Jeff. K says, yes, Kasich made my state of Ohio a toxic waste dump with fracking, and it continues. Damn sad. Elaine McForbes has joined, and Dolores Pierce joined again. Hi, Dolores. Ernest Jones has joined, and Steve Wolfbrand has joined. Steve says, hi, Doc, I shared. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Steve. Steve says, Doc Joe offers postgraduate education for free. No student loans, no final exams. <laughs> and Steve says, where? On the Big Island? You know, the Big Island is a wonderful place, but the lava does come down occasionally. And Steve says, may be too late for us. The permafrost is melting and burning in Siberia. And the peat moss is burning there, too. Coral reefs are dying. The Amazon is dying. Yes, Steve. All that is happening. Steve agrees. Bernie's plan is best. Doctor, just curious. Do you believe in aliens? Okay, in UFOs. Well, uh, just curious. I have an open mind about that. Okay. I've read uh, some of the literature over the years from time to time. In fact, as a very young man, I read uh, what was then available. When I say very young man, I mean in the late 1940s and early 1950s. And I've always kept an open mind okay, about that. I know the interest of the government in covering up that kind of thing. But I have a feeling, though, I sort of have a nagging feeling 
that if there were definite evidence, uh, let's say by the 1970s, that a president like uh, by Jimmy Carter would have talked about it with uh, the American people. It's just one of the things he wouldn't have felt comfortable in um, keeping secret. I think most of the other presidents we have, one of the other presidents that we've had, uh, really do believe in secrecy and hiding things. And I don't think that any other president would have come clean about that. But I think Jimmy would have. And so I suppose uh, that if people in the government knew something about that by the 1970s, okay, I don't think that uh, uh, Jimmy Carter knew about it. Of course, it's been 40 years um, since then, and there might be a lot more information about it. Um, but, um, but now, occasionally, I see some documentaries. It's interesting that the Defense Department is beginning to collaborate with some of the UFO um, investigators uh, to try to nail down some things now. It'll be interesting to see what happens with that. So I have an open mind about that. I have an open mind about uh, most things, actually. It's my thing to have an open mind. That's about uh, actually being a critical rationalist in my philosophy. I am what's called a critical rationalist. Any other comments or questions? I had very few shares tonight, at least according to what I see here on my uh, on my Facebook today. It says that there are very few shares thus far. So I would appreciate it if you could start to multiply those shares. Steve says, good answer. <laughs> I don't think people who believe okay, in UFOs are crazy. I think there uh, have been enough occurrences and all kinds of anecdotes over the years that uh, there may be a factual basis for all of it. Uh, that is an extraplanetary basis, or perhaps an extra dimensional basis. Thanks, Lana. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you, Steve. Yes, I agree. I completely agree. Everybody has to be careful about um, ending up in Facebook jail. If one shares too much, the penalty is Facebook jail. And it's not worth it. So please do, do share, but please do be careful also. I don't want anybody getting in Facebook jail on my account. But you can't really help me if you're in Facebook jail. So, any other comments or questions or remarks?
for things to be themselves, for things to be done. Intra dimensions or time travelers are possibilities as well. Yes. Uh, yes, I know. Um, has anybody been watching The Man in the High Castle, by the way? That's a series, okay, on Amazon. Uh, that's based on the book by Philip K. Dick, which is a book, it goes back to, I think, the 1960s or 1950s. I have the book. Uh, it's actually somewhere close at hand. But I read it a long, long time ago, probably 50 years ago now. Anyway, it's based on a 50-year-old book. Lana says, I'm going to say good night as usual. I'm still at my desk. Oh, I'm sorry, Lana. It's late. Yes, it's good to keep an open mind. It's much better to keep on learning about things. Much more fun, too. Well, thank you for all those hearts, people. <laughs> Well, thank you, Steve. Thought it was a pretty good show myself, actually. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. But I enjoy most of them. Just, I just like to do these shows. Yeah, Bonnie is laughing at me, as usual. Well, thank you again, Steve. Okay. I think I'm going to call it a night. So, good night. I'll be back again tomorrow night. And I'll see you then. Have a great day.